Hey, good morning, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to the house of the Lord and welcome to our live broadcast. Please we like are, and share. Yes, if you would, go ahead. This is what I'm doing. If right you here. have your smartphone or device right there with you, go ahead and like and share this Sunday morning service. It's going to be a wonderful time together in the house of the Lord. It is almost like spring outside. Yeah, That's yeah. how pretty <laughs> no, it is. No, he's complaining. And PJ told me that this Wednesday it's going to be up to 50, up to 50. Man, we're not going to know what to do with ourselves with that beautiful weather. So God bless you. Welcome today to the house of the Lord. And welcome to our online audience today. To those of you who are watching from different parts of the world, different parts of the country, we welcome you today. And to our inmates at the Freeborn County Detention Center. We call it the Freeborn County Hotel. We welcome you today. We understand that they are showing our broadcast through YouTube on Saturday nights. So welcome today. Le damos la bienvenida. La bienvenida a ustedes que están encarcelado aquí en el condado de Freeborn. Yo soy Pastor Jorge Marín, mi esposa, Pastora Jill. Y estamos muy alegres de estar con ustedes en este servicio. Y queremos que saben que esta iglesia está con ustedes en espíritu. No podemos estar allí con ustedes en la cárcel, pero estamos trayendo este servicio espiritual lleno de la gracia de Dios okay. para soportar a ustedes, apoyarlos en el Señor. Amen. Amen. We are just greeting our Spanish-speaking brothers that are at the Freeborn County Jail, letting them know that not the whole world has forgotten them. There is a church full of people that love them, are praying for them, and praying all God's best for them. We greet you today in the name of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet today, and we're going to open with a word of prayer. Would you give just a big God bless you to those that are joining us here online today? God bless you. God bless you. We are delighted that you are here with us, and we are coming together in the presence of the Lord today. And to those of you that are watching online today, we're going to ask you to give us and God your complete undivided attention today. We're going to ask you not to be doing the dishes or doing any work or any schoolwork like that. Come into the presence of the Lord. This is one of the most important services that you will ever be in in all of your life. The Lord has spoken very clearly to my heart, we have a word of caution, we have a word of instruction for God's people today, and it's going to be a blessing to your life. PJ, will you open this beautiful service in a word of prayer? Yes, Lord, we love you. We are so Thank you, thankful Lord. that Thank we you, Lord. have this day of life, this day of breath, that we can praise you. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that during this season we remember the birth of Jesus and what a Praise miracle God. that is to us. We worship Hallelujah. you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord this morning. There are words right there on the pages, I should say right on the tables, right there in front of you. Praise God. Joy to the world. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, that you weren't in a palace surrounded by big walls and guards and pomp and circumstance, mm -hmm. but you came to us, wooing us, drawing us, poor, rich, everyone in between, magis, wise men, shepherds, mm -hmm. people, working people, God, and you brought us together, Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we love you for that. We love you for that, and we give you the highest praise Thank today, you. oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all God's people shout amen, amen. this morning. Come on, shout amen this morning. Amen. If you're online, go ahead and type amen right there. <laughs> I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Praise God, praise God, praise God. 
Peggy, will you just bless the Lord over the congregation today? Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift you up right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Thank I pray you, Father. a blessing over this group here and for all those who are listening, Lord. May we receive your word, Father. May Hallelujah. Deep into our hearts, Lord. And may it stick with us and take root, Father. Thank we you, Lord. that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Well, you may be seated just for a little bit. God bless you. We are so delighted that you are here today with us in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Where we are going to enjoy each other. We are. We are. We're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord together. Yes. God is so good, isn't he? All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. That's a good refrain. Praise God. We want to remind you that back at our giving station today, we have uh, this quarter's uh, December, January, and February of our daily bread. Those are free for you. That's a free resource that our ministry provides for you. It's set a designated time for family devotions. Every married couple, you can use this. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and wheel and think about what you're going to share. You can just go to the date right here, sit down, have some coffee or some juice. Married couples, sit down and pray together. Share the word of the Lord. Moms and dads, you can use this as a very, very useful tool. You don't have to think anything up. You don't have to go and buy any special curriculum. Use the curriculum of the Word of God. And every Christian family should have a designated time. Not fit it in wherever you... Well, we'll see if we can fit it in. No, no, no. We're talking about family devotion time here with the Lord. Let everybody say amen. amen. There's never That's enough time when you try to fit it in. That's exactly right. Set a time. Mm -hmm. Set a time. When I was growing up, every morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning, my father and my mother would gather our family together, and we would open the book of Proverbs, and we would read from the chapter that correlated with the date of the month. You know, some of the first messages that I ever preached was in family devotions. And you talk about a tough crowd, tough crowd tough preaching to your own family, <laughs> an ordained dad and mom and that knew the word of God and a brother and sister that hated me most mornings. <laughs> and I was having to preach to them. That's why I can preach to any crowd. That's it true. doesn't That's matter true. what the crowd is. I can preach to any That's crowd true. because I grew up preaching to my family. But mom and dads, you got to take this seriously. Grandpas and grandmas. There are more grandpas and grandmas that are raising grandkids today yeah. than ever in the history of America. You need this right here. You need this right here. Set a designated time where you have morning devotions, where nobody has their phone on. Nobody has earbuds in or earphones or looking away at another screen. Turn off all the other screens. Open the Word of God and share it with your families. If, if you you're, don't have one physically in your hand, you can look it up online. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no good excuse why <laughs> believers should not be ingesting the Word of God every single day. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Unless I'm in the wrong church this morning. Amen. I think I'm in the right church. So our daily bread, when you go, bring your tithes to the Lord and your offering. Just pick one up right there. We always have them here at the church house where you can get them every quarter. Praise God. All right, PJ, would you lead us in our worship of, of uh, giving today? Yes. Thanks. Good morning again, everyone, whether you're here with us or online today. We welcome you, and we worship the Lord next with our giving. He gives us so much, we could never, ever pay him back. And he doesn't want us to pay him back, but we, we give of our loving Amen. and grateful hearts to him. And so we bring the first 10% of our, of our living to the Lord as tithe, and we add an offering to it. And so there are some easy ways to do that this morning. If you're here in the uh, room, we have the... Uh, tithe and offering box in the back. Um, you can, if you're giving online or with your device, you can use um, your device to text 
to the number 77977. Text CONNECT number 2 GRACE all together in caps. CONNECT number 2 GRACE to 77977. There's also a push pay um, link, I believe, in the heading of this video. And um, PayPal, you can also use PayPal, send to gccalbertlee at gmail.com or if you'd like to uh, use good old snail mail, send to PO Box 1, Albert Lee, Minnesota 56007. Excellent. PJ, you do such a great job <laughs> at sharing our giving, giving options. So if you're using a smart device, text to give 77977. Connect number two grace to 77977. If you're still using PayPal, we give that option and we ask you to use the friends and family option and then that 3% is not charged uh, to the ministry when you give. Um, and then good old snail mail. Good old snail mail. PayPal is GCC Albert Lee. JCC Albert Lee at gmail.com. And, uh, and then snail mail, P.O. Box 1. P.O. Box 1. Now that is way high. PJ has to get in her tippy toes to get the <laughs> mail out of there. Remember, but we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. Um, I got to tell you, we got a good group of people that have been so faithful mm -hmm. in their giving. Mm -hmm. When we were under the first lockdown, people would bring their tithes yes. to our home. They would bring their check, mm -hmm. and so many people would bring like some cookies or some <laughs> banana <laughs> bread. We had people bring us chicken breasts. Yeah. Some people cooked for us, and they brought us that, and uh, they were just so faithful. If you have gotten off track in your giving, I want you to know the Lord wants you to get back on track. Just go ahead and repent before the Lord and come before him with your tithes. Make up whatever, wherever you have slacked off, God will help you. And then add an offering to that. And we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Simply yes. because perhaps the church house is closed down for a little while doesn't mean the normal operating expenses and the mission ceases. I got to tell you, when COVID hit, PJ and I, we punched it into like third high gear. Our workload tripled when we went into that first lockdown because so many people were dealing with depression and worry and anxiety and things like that. And you know what? It's a perfect time for the church to be the church and minister to people in their yeah. time of need. Can you clap your hands to the Lord this morning? Come on, go ahead and clap your hands to the Lord this morning. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to pray over our giving. We're going to declare the blessings of the Lord upon your life. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. But I got to tell you, sometimes we're not so cheerful when we're obeying God. Sometimes when you don't know where that next paycheck's going to come from or where that next uh, gas payment or whatever's going to come from. And you're writing that tithe check. Yes, I'm going to be bold enough to say, go ahead and write that tithe check because God promises to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing yes. on you so much that you can't contain it. Can you say amen? amen. Father in heaven, we thank you that your word is alive, it is real, yes. your promises are ever true, mm -hmm. you have never failed, you yes. will not fail mm -hmm. in this hour, and you will never fail. Never fail. And Lord, when your people are faithful in their tithing, mm -hmm. in their sowing, Lord, you find creative ways to come to them and to bless them and to meet their needs and to prosper them, even in times of famine and peril. Your people prosper, Lord. So we bless your word. We bless your promises. We bless the workings of your hands, O oh God. And we bless your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So if you would safely move to the giving station, please maintain your social distancing. Parents, grandparents, bring your children with you today. Teach them how to give. Amen. And each and every one of us, every time we come into the house of the Lord, we should come with an offering in our hands. So we want to give everyone the opportunity to give today. Amen. Amen.
And something new this Wednesday, we're doing a Kids Connect Zoom at 5 o'clock. Oh, I'm excited about that. 5 o'clock uh, Wednesday. So if you have a, um, a child in that range, we have some uh, activity papers in the back. And yeah, what is that range? Well, um, we're going from Abby all the way down to um, kindergarten. Probably. And Abby's so, how old? Well, Abby's eight. Okay, all right. So, um, you know, elementary age is what we're kind of shooting for. And um, so the activity page, pages are in the back. And if you're interested in joining us, PM us and we'll send you the information. And then um, we'll have Team Connect uh, starting at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. We'll have some info out about that. We're going to have a theme for each month. And we're going to be putting both our kids and our youth on the same growth track in terms of uh, scriptural education. So like maybe uh, one month will be courage, one month will be honesty, one month will be the miracles of God, the power of God, and we're going to keep our kids and our youth on that same track because the Word of God teaches us that the first line of defense for the family, the nation, the world is the family. And God has placed upon the shoulders of parents, placed upon the shoulders of parents, the responsibility of raising their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So many families get away from their personal responsibility and they throw all of that onto the church, onto the youth group, onto kids ministry. You teach my kids and uh, that's the way it is. That is not our philosophy here at Grace. We want to help put that responsibility on parents that they are teaching the Word of God in their homes, teaching good manners, teaching scriptural principles to their children, and then the church comes alongside of them and we help reinforce the godly rearing that parents and grandparents are providing to their children. Can you say amen? amen. So amen. this is going to be a great tool in the hands of our parents that they will know ahead of time what the theme is for that month. And the parents and the family and the church can work together in dealing with these very, very critical issues in these very critical times. So we're launching that this week, and we had a Zoom meeting with our parents, and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Amen. We need. All right. Praise God. Are you ready for the Word? Yes. Haven't put you on the ropes too much today? No. All right. Wake up. Be alive. Be alert this morning. All right. We're turning to Psalms 46. <laughs> so we're reading to you out of the New Living Translation today. Here's what it says. God is our refuge and strength. Everybody say amen. amen. That's a good word. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Always, Always ready to help in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. So we will not fear. Everybody say that. We will not fear. We will not fear. When earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. Think about that. Think about the positivity of this writer as he's writing to the people of God about God. Let me say something very strongly to you. If you are bored in your Christianity, here's a newsflash for you. You're doing it all wrong. That's right. You're doing it all wrong. Wake up and smell the coffee this morning. God has a walk with him for you that is an absolute adventure every single day. Yeah. Every single day. Amen. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I wish he'd lay off a little bit on this adventure thing. But listen to these words. God, God, everybody say God, God. is our refuge and strength. Yes. God is our refuge and strength. Not the government, mm -hmm. not President Trump, not President Biden, mm -hmm. not our governor, not our mayor, not our council, not our school board, not our county commission. Government is not our refuge and strength. For some, 
it is, and they're realizing that that doesn't always work out so well. Mm -hmm. But God is our refuge and strength. It doesn't say God was. God sometimes is. It says God is our refuge and strength. Yes. Amen. God is. You should wake up today and realize that. Rouse yourself. Mm -hmm. Stir yourself. Wake up to the realization that God is our refuge and strength. Yes. He's not sometimes ready. Right. He's always ready. Always ready. He's always ready. Thank you, Lord. To help in times of trouble. Yes. Well, what about those that say, if there's trouble in the world, where is this loving God? He's everywhere, baby case. Yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah. Think about how bad it would be if God wasn't on the scene. Mm -hmm. Some of us need to flip that coin in our head from looking at the trouble and questioning where is God to realizing that God's word declares he is always ready to help in times of trouble. Yeah. Amen. 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 So we will not fear. That's a declaration. Mm -hmm. That's a declaration that some of you need to go home and type it out. Some of you need to take some lipstick and write, write it on your mirror. I'm telling you, our kids thought G and PJ were nuts <laughs> when they were growing up in our home. Because I would type out scriptures and promises and tape them all throughout the house. My kids grew up with taped scriptures on their doors so that when they opened that door in the morning, the first thing that hit them in their cute little face was the Word of God. When they went into the bathroom, there were scriptures taped on the mirrors. Even to this day, we have scriptures printed out and taped on our front window. This isn't some kind of Christian magic. These aren't incantations or potions or or just writ that we that we subscribe to. It is the living, powerful word of God. Yeah. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. It is God's word that we declare over our lives. Amen. So we will not fear. He's always ready to help in times of trouble. So therefore we will not fear. You don't have to wonder this morning. You don't have to bite your nails or stay awake all night. Just walking, pacing the floor. Wondering if God's going to help you. No, God is going to help you. And he's going to help you in your time of trouble. Amen. We will not fear when earthquakes come. I grew up in California with earthquakes every day. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Californians don't fear earthquakes. We just don't. When PG and I were moving out of our apartment, we were going to move everything into storage. And we were moving to Lafayette, Indiana, our first full-time ministry call. PJ was at work. She worked for the federal government. She was the office manager of the Southern District of the IRS. Mm. Wow. On a weekly basis, sometimes, uh, especially like during tax season, they would have bomb threats. <laughs> and we didn't have cell phones in those days. I used to have a little pager, and my pager would go off, and I would have to run home, check the answering <laughs> machine. That answering machine was big like this with big cassette tapes and I would have to press and it would rewind and you'd hear the voice rewinding and then I'd stop it and I'd listen and she'd say hi babe we had another bomb threat we're across the, we're across the street they found a stainless steel briefcase in the men's bathroom or they found this and they would clear out like three or four floors that was just a regular occurrence in our lives yeah. we learned to live with it we learned to deal with it let me tell you something. Your life does not have to fall apart when your life falls apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again this morning because I didn't even get one amen out of that. Your life doesn't have to fall apart when life falls apart. Yes. We will not fear 
when earthquakes come. Why? Because God is our refuge and our strength. Yes. He is always ready always. to help in times of trouble. Yes. Mm. Mm. I just preach myself happy. <laughs> we will not fear when earthquakes come and when mountains crumble into the sea. I have preached in Greece. Greece has something like 3,500 islands. I never knew that. I never knew that. And there is seismic activity every day in Greece. Earthquakes happening, mountains falling into the sea, new islands being created. Every single day, this activity is going on in Greece. And you know what? One of the most powerful churches I have ever attended in my life is in Athens, Greece, pastored by Pastor Mimos. And I'm telling you, when you walk in to the front door of that church, those people make you feel like you just won the Super Bowl. They are slapping you on the back. They're shaking your hand. They're fist bumping you. They're applauding you. That church, when it opens up, it's like a house of fire. The presence of God is there. People are so excited. People are excited to be in the presence of God. They're not fearful. They are combating their fears and their worries and their anxieties and their troubles through praise and worship. And I'm telling you, though, the mountains crumble and fall into the seas because God is our refuge, because God is always ready to help in times of trouble, we will not fear. And then notice the tone that David takes on. He's getting bolder and bolder. Do you know that boldness begets boldness? Mm -hmm. Courage is contagious. Mm -hmm. Happiness is contagious. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is Amen. contagious. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years back in Charismania, <laughs> we had the laughing revivals. Laughing revivals. Where whole services, people would just get drunk in the Holy Ghost. They would just fall out on the floor laughing. And so many people poo-pooed that. They wanted to throw wet blankets on it. And people were acting crazy. But let me tell you something. For me, coming out of a very staunch, starchy, um, I'm going to say stiff neck Pentecostalism where everything was a sin, where so much was fear-based. I'm going to tell you, in those years, a few years ago, God completely set me free from fear, worry, anxiety, and that kind of stuff, that stuffiness in church. And I joined the charismatics in laughing and receiving the joy of the Lord. There were even a few services when Pastor G just got down on the floor and roared with laughter. Let me tell you something. I didn't, I didn't care really what was going on. I needed some joy in my life because trouble had hit us. And I'm here to tell you that joy and happiness and positivity and the spirit of God, it, 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 it can't always be taught. Sometimes it's got to be caught. That's right. Amen. 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 And I'm here to inspire you today. I'm here to pump you full of faith and the word of God that can turn fear into faith. It can turn weakness into courage. Courage is contagious. When a good person takes a stand, the spines of others are stiffened. And I'm here to tell you right now, things are moving. They are quaking and they are shaking. There is junk going on right under the surface, but I'm here to prophesy that God is about to breathe on this nation. And God is going to knock down the house of cards that have been erected, that has been created to control people, to bring people under fear, to bring people under worry, under anxiety. But I'm here to declare today, God is our refuge. God is our strength. When the mountains tremble, when the earth is quaking, when mountains are crumbling into the sea, we will not fear. Amen. 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 And notice how David strengthens 
with each verse, with each refrain, David is strengthening, he is mountaining strength, and he gets to the point where he just says, let the oceans roar. Let the oceans roar. Let them roar and foam. Let them do whatever they're going to do. You know what? I got two powerful ladies in my life that I do life and ministry with. One is this beautiful little sweetie right here, PJ, and one is Elder Peggy Bennett. And there is something that I continually draw from these two strong ladies in my life. I feel like Barack in the Old Testament with these two ladies. Wherever you go, I'll go. <laughs> and I won't go unless you go. Peggy, that's the way I feel about you. PJ, that's the way I feel about you. Here's something that I see in these two ladies. And I, I, I want to just hook up to that and draw from that. They have the ability to speak strongly in a diplomatic, kind, tender-hearted way. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to move them off mark. You can try to intimidate them. You can take out ads against them. You can hire people to malign them and try to ruin their reputation. But they are women that are established believers. And they stand in this generation as modern day Deborahs. And this is what I see in them. Do whatever you got to do. Say whatever you got to say. Do whatever you feel you got to do, but you're not moving me Amen. off mark. Amen. Peggy, I honor you today. PJ, I honor you today, and I want more of that in my life. I want more of that in my life. I want to be able to look at any situation, natural, supernatural, temporal, or eternal, and say, do whatever you got to do, baby cakes. My trust is in the Lord, yeah. the maker of heaven and earth. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the water surge. Let all that happen. You know what? Uh, 28 years ago when we came to Minnesota, we flew my dad in. My mom had just died that year. And that first winter, we flew my dad in. Now, my dad lived in beautiful San Diego, California. 70 degree weather year round. But he had spent 19 months, 19 months in Alaska, in the United States Marine Corps. I thought when we came to Albert Lee, my dad would say, you know what? I need to go live with George and PJ. I need to go do the help them in their I really thought that. I had an expectation my dad just wasn't ever going to fulfill. I just thought he'd say, man, it's time for me to move up stakes and go build with my son and daughter. But he didn't, but he would come every three months. And that first year, we had like 18 inches of snow. <laughs> and we were driving on Interstate 90, and I was at the helm. We had an Oldsmobile 98 that was like 28 feet long. <laughs> it was like a boat. Rear wheel drive. No weight in the trunk. I didn't know anything about that in those days. Mm -hmm. I was just fresh from California, Indiana here. And we were driving down Interstate 90, and I had the cruise control set. Now, how many of you know you don't keep your cruise oh, control? Dear. You don't do it. And when that car began to fishtail, I did the second mistake, and I just laid on the brakes. How many of you know you don't do that either? Look at that, look at that. I wish those of you on camera could just see all, all Pastor G. Oh, Lord. Well, I didn't know anything about anything. And I laid on the brakes, and that car began to spin, 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 spin. Went from the fast lane to the slow lane down into the ditch. Whoa, backwards like that. Elisha was just a three-month-old baby, if that, in the car seat. PJ with her body draped over Elisha. <laughs> and we dug, we dug ourselves out of that vehicle. Thank God we had an old Uniden um, CB radio. <laughs> called for help. Climbed our way up out of that. Stood on the side of the road like orphans. And then here came a Minnesota trooper. Called a tow truck. 
We got the family to safety. My dad and I went back with the tow truck driver, pulled our car out. But I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. As the car was spinning out of control, my father from Southern California reached over and put his hand on my right knee. And he had a grip that was like a vice grip. And he just held me. A father held his son from shotgun position. And he was saying this while things were spinning out of control. This is a prophetic utterance over somebody's life this morning. My dad kept saying, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I'm telling you from that day forward, when my heart has been broken, when the mountains are crumbling into the sea, when the earth is shaking and quaking, when people have walked out of my life, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm driving this vehicle. My father is right by my side. He reaches his hand out and he steadies me and he says, do not fear. I'm your refuge. I'm your strength. I'm a very present help in time of need and everything is going to be okay. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow, what a word, what a word, what a word. Can you say amen, amen. this morning? So let the earth crumble. Let the mountains fall. Right. Let the oceans roar. Mm -hmm. Our strength is in the Lord. Amen. I cannot tell you how important it is that we as believers get the word in us. Amen. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress how important it is for believers to get the word inside of us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Not for your response, but for results in your life. It is so important that we as believers are daily getting the word into our hearts. Yes. Mm -hmm. David said, your word I have hidden in my heart so that I will not sin against you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. David said that. I will take your word. I will hide it in my heart. I will get it in me. I will get it through every orifice and pore and get it to every cell in my body. I will get it into my heart, my mind, my will, my emotions, so that I will not sin. Did you know that when the word of God uses the word sin, it means to miss the mark and not receive the prize. Mm -hmm. Wherever we are missing the mark in our life, wherever God has set a bullseye of success, a bullseye of fulfillment, a bullseye of deliverance, a bullseye of healing, a bullseye of everything that comes broken by life and God is repairing it and putting it back together wherever we are missing the mark. I guarantee you it is an area where we are not getting the word of God into our heart. Every single person in this room, every single person watching on this broadcast this morning knows that if your car is pulling the right, you don't just let it go. You don't just say, okay, I'll just learn to adjust. I used to have an old pickup one time that I pulled a muscle in my left shoulder because that car was so jacked up and I didn't have any money to fix it. I just kept pulling to the left. Let me tell you something. Some of you are aching, you are in pain, you need an adjustment, you need a spiritual chiropractic adjustment today because your life is jacked up, it's pulling in the wrong direction. You need to get it on the rack and you need to get let Dr. Jesus get under that thing and say, okay, here's what's out of alignment and we'll put the word of God on it. Yeah. We'll adjust that, we'll replace those thoughts with scriptural thoughts and that car will line up. I'm here to talk to somebody that's in pain this morning because your life has gone off. You're headed toward the ditch, but I'm here to pump faith into you that God is your refuge and strength. Yes. God is your helper. Get the word of God inside of you yes. and begin to obey it and 
practice it and watch how things will come into your life. Are you with me this morning? Yes. It is so important. Let me tell you a little story. There was a, a little country pre, little country house preacher that was preaching. He was preaching to a bunch of deadheads. He was preaching to people that wouldn't preach back with him. They wouldn't say amen when he said, clap your hands, or when he sang songs like, uh, you know, with my hands lifted up, people wouldn't move. They were just staunch. They were stoic. They weren't moving. Stubborn, some might say. Some might say. <laughs> nothing like the churches that we pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Everybody comes in clicking on all cylinders, ready for the word. But this preacher was a little discouraged this morning. Man, I've been that preacher some days. Yeah. And he walked to church. And he was walking home from church one day. And he looked over to the side. He heard something that sounded like crying. Just like the wind picked up the sound and he heard this crying and this wailing and he looks to his right and he sees this dude dressed in a red suit. It's not Halloween. Dressed in a red suit with horns, a pitchfork, a tail, a goatee, and the mustache. And he looks over and this guy looks just like the devil. And he walks over to the guy and the guy's crying. He's just sobbing. He's got his head down on his Fist like that, looking like the thinker. And he says, hey, buddy, are you okay? And the guy looks up. His mascara is running. <laughs> and he said, buddy, he said, you're dressed just like the devil. He said, well, I should because I am the devil. And the preacher was like, what? You're the devil? I'm the devil. I didn't think you actually had horns and a pitchfork and dressed in red and that goofy mustache. Goofy. He said, I'm the devil, buddy. He's wiping his eye, mascara running dead. He says, devil. Why are you crying? I mean, the preacher actually had compassion on the devil because he was crying. Buddy, why are you crying? Here's what the devil said. He said, because those Christians, every Christian I know, blames all their problems on me. <laughs> I'm just having a bad day today because every Christian I know, every Christian I attack, every Christian that I scheme against and strategize against and launch my wiles against them, every single one of them is blaming all of their problems on me. That preacher just shook his head with a thought in his mind and said, Buddy, you're preaching my game. You're telling me exactly what I already know. I'm here to tell you today, believers, you need to stop blaming all your problems on the devil. Right. I'm going to say that again. Believers, you need to quit. You need to stop. You need to cease right now in blaming all of your problems on the devil. Right. It is so important that you get the word of God into your heart because so many are missing the mark right now, especially in this time of pandemic. They have pulled back. They have disconnected. They have gotten out like an ember out of the fire. And they've said, I can make it out here on my own. Let me tell you this. God's greatest idea on the earth was not creation. It was the local church. God has created the body of the local church. It is different members, but the members working together. And when we disconnect from the church, we disconnect from God. Amen. Yeah, that's right. When we disconnect from the body, we are disconnecting from God. There are so many people that tell me, oh, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Let me tell you something. We, we're going to celebrate 32 years of a great marriage this year, December 31st. This month, yeah, that's right. It would not be much of a marriage. It would not be much of a relationship if we never came home to one another. I'm telling you, we live together in holy matrimony. And the, re the revelation of God and his church is that of a bride and a groom. And I'm here to tell people today, you need to do everything that you can to stay connected to the church. Yes. Stay connected to the church. Some are saying, well, I just can't go into groups or anything. It's okay. Be faithful to the online services. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are connected. Make sure that you're checking in with your leaders. 
Don't just fly off and go off any which way. Remain connected to the church. Because I'm telling you right now, PJ and I, as community leaders, as local shepherds, as overseers in the body of Christ, there is an, an, an enormous, there's an enormous number of Christian families that are so jacked up in their relationships, in their finances, in their devotion to God, in their tithing, in their service, in their disciplines, in their discipleship. And what is happening is we are seeing people that are not regularly delving into the Word of God so that the Word of God gets hidden in them and they don't miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to find somebody to blame for our problems. Let me tell you something. Every time I go off track, I can link it back to a disconnect between me and God's word. Yeah. Yeah. David said, your word I have hidden in my heart so that I won't miss your mark. Oh right. God. Clap your hands to the Lord. Yeah. When we do not get the word into us, when we are disconnecting from God and from his church, we have to find somebody to blame for our problems. This goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Genesis chapter 3. God created man in Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 3, the spirit of Satan, the fallen angel, embodies a Komodo dragon, a lizard, this type of uh, creature, reptile. And he enters into the perfection of Eden. And he climbs up on a tree and he begins to distract Eve. Let me tell you quickly the three D's of the devil. He distracts, he deceives so that he can destroy. Mm -hmm. He distracts so that he can deceive so that he can destroy. Mm -hmm. He distracts so that he can deceive so that he can destroy. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to our first parents. God said... You, shall, you can eat of every tree in the garden. Every tree. But don't eat of that one. God said that. You can eat of absolutely every tree. But not that one. But already in the heart of humankind. Was a desire to have what God says we shouldn't have. You see they went against the word. They went against the word. Satan speaks. The serpent speaks. The dragon speaks. Did God say he inserted doubt? You see, the enemy takes care of, takes advantage of us with doubt when we're not solid in the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil takes advantage of God's people and he causes us to doubt when we're not solid in the, in the word. Amen. The, New, the Old Testament writer on behalf of God said, my people perish mm -hmm. for the lack of knowledge. Yeah. Is God working in your relationships? It's because there's a connection. Is the enemy trying to break that? Yes. He wants to distract you and he'll use whatever he can. Right now he's using a pandemic. Right now he's allowing people every opportunity to disconnect. He's distracting them. He's using the economy. He's using fear. He's using anxiety. He's using worry. Whatever it is, he'll use it to get you distracted. Mm -hmm. And then he inserts the venom of deception. Let me say this to you. Nobody ever dies from a snake bite. Nobody ever dies from a snake bite. Hear me this morning. Nobody. They die from the venom that enters into the system when they are bitten by the snake. Mm -hmm. That's why they need whatever potion, whatever injection that counters that venom. And it heals the person. Mm -hmm. It saves their life. You are not going to die because of an attack of Satan on your life. He cannot kill you. If you read the story of Job, God had to drop the hedge of protection around him. 
God had Satan on a very short leash. You can touch all his things. You can touch his skin. Don't touch his life. You are not going to die from the attack of Satan on your life. What you're going to die from is a negative response that allows the venom that came in through the distraction and the deception. And that will lead to your destruction. Here's the good news. God is your helper. God is on your side. God is your refuge. God is your strength. God is always ready to help in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we get the word of God into us. Let me give you a word here that God gave me. On November 27th, 2018, two years ago, God gave me the word to prepare me and to prepare the church and anyone that would read this and hear this for exactly where we're standing today. We are not helpless if the Lord is our helper. We are only helpless if we try to do everything on our own. The scriptures teach us God is a very present help in time of need. The favor of the Lord is available for us today. Let us seek the Lord with our whole heart. For in that time we will find him. And in that hour he will help us. Thank you Lord for your help. Thank you O oh Lord for your help. November 27, 2018. I had no idea that God was releasing a prophetic word. For something that would, that would prepare us for the season in which we're in in 2020. Mm -hmm. I declared that word in our churches. I declared that word on this international platform of social media. We are not helpless. We are only helpless when we try to do everything on our own. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, this morning. God has sent me as a prophetic Barnabas in your life to tell you we are in the season right now that God tried his best to prepare us for some time ago. But because so many of us were distracted then we bit into the deception and some are headed for destruction right now. But God has sent me today to throw a stop stick in there and say, you do not have to be destroyed. You do not have to die from this. God is your refuge and your strength. Wake up today and realize that God is on your side. Yeah. He's always ready to help in time. But I can guarantee you this. That there were people that were trying to live life on their very own. That's why when this important word went forth, it went in one ear and out, and out the other. And I'm here to tell you today, I'm telling you, hard times are on us right now. Difficult times are on us right now. I'm not a doomsday preacher, but this is nothing compared to what is coming down the track against God's people. This is why you must wake yourself up today and get back into the word of God and yes. get back to your relationship with God. Yes. Regain your connection today because I'm telling you, God is on your side yes. and God will begin to turn your trouble into trouble. Amen. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. There is a time and a season for everything under heaven. I'm just going to give you two quick revelations that the Lord gave me as I was preparing for this message today. Number one, do you remember the story of Mary and Lazarus and Martha? Mm -hmm. Jesus went to their home in Bethany. That was a place of respite for him. It was a place of restoration and healing for him. And he got there on this one occasion and Martha, thank God for Martha's, she was busy in the kitchen. She was busy cleaning. She was busy decorating. She was busy preparing for Jesus. Even after Jesus had arrived, she was still so busy. And Jesus was in the living room talking, sharing the words of life. His word is spirit and it is life. And Mary found a place at his feet. Mary came and sat down at his feet and like a dry sponge was soaking up everything that Jesus had to give. And Martha, she was off busy. And she came to Jesus and she said, Jesus, 
Don't you care that I'm so busy working hard here? And, and my sister Mary, she's just lazy. She's not doing anything. She just sit there drinking in at your feet. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Mary has chosen the right thing here. She's chosen to take advantage of this time together, this FaceTime right now. And Martha, you are encumbered by many, many things. It wasn't a rebuke to Martha. The Lord revealed this to me. It wasn't a rebuke to Martha that she was busy, that she was industrious, that she was resourceful, that she cared. It was a lesson to her and therefore to all of us today and especially in this time of pandemic when the enemy is seeking to destroy. There is a time and season for everything under heaven. Let me tell you something. There is a time and a season where we are to lay aside every encumbrance and take full advantage of the presence of God. Amen. Because in that presence of God, God is releasing word to his people that they're going to be able to live on Yes. I'm here to tell you today, especially in this time of pandemic, especially when we are having to go to online services. I, I love preaching the camera. I love talking to people. I love doing everything that we're doing right now. But let me tell you something. Don't become so disconnected that this online service and this in-person service is not the highest priority in your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Martha loved Jesus, but she brought her encumbrances, all the cares of her life, all that stuff she was carrying, all that stuff that she found her identity in, she brought it into the presence of Jesus and it removed the powerful impact that the presence and the word had in her life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what did she have to do? She had to find somebody to blame. In the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve fell and God came to Adam and he held him accountable, what did Adam do? He blamed it on his beautiful wife. And then the beautiful wife blamed it on the serpent. Let me tell you today, some of you are blaming all of your ills on the devil and on somebody else when you need to be looking right here and saying, God, I got off track. I wasn't in your word. I wasn't taking full advantage of your presence. I was bringing in all my encumbrances here into your presence and I wasn't taking advantage of it. Here's a very strong word for those of you that are watching online. I'm going to tell you as a servant of the Lord, please do not, please do not just treat this as an extracurricular activity in your life. This is not the time to be doing your dishes this is not the time to be working on your computer and just listening to the word. Hear the story of Mary and Martha. Martha missed out. Mary took advantage of the presence and the word. And God said she's chosen the choice decision. Mm -hmm. Don't, please, don't bring all your troubles and struggles onto this online thing. Say, oh, you know, I'll just listen to it later or I'll catch it while I'm doing this. I cannot emphasize how important it is to remain connected to God and remain connected to the body. Yes. If you are watching from home with your family, stop everything. Pull your family together. Turn off all the other devices. Turn off everything else. Put the roast in the oven, but come to church and give God your undivided attention because he will take those encumbrances and he'll take that weight off your shoulder as he has promised. Come to me. All of you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. 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 When you come to church in in-person services, leave all that stuff outside. Don't come with your shopping list and your problems and all that on your mind. Come in and sit at the feet of Jesus. And if you can't do anything, just soak it in. Soak it in. Soak it in. Because God's presence and his word is what you need more than anything else in your life. Yes. Amen. Here's, a, here's the last one. I know, I'm, I know I'm preaching long today, but I'm telling you, time is short. Eternity is long. Hell is hot. People need the good preaching of the word and the presence more than ever before right now. Can you say amen? amen? Here's the third revelation that God gave to me. 
The story of the friends that brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus. Right now, you and I as believers need to be doing every single thing we can to get our friends to Jesus. We need to be willing to rip the roof off the place, metaphorically, mm -hmm. symbolically, mm -hmm. to get our friends to Jesus. In this time of pandemic, don't let the, go, the great go mission go into the trash can. Mm -hmm. Don't become so self-fulfilled and so self-centered and so focused in on what you're going on that you forget that God has called us to take the gospel and to make disciples of all people. Here's something that's going to sting a little bit. The Lord told me this morning, there are people that are messing around with the world and they think that the world won't end up messing with them. Mm -hmm. Remember, distraction, deception, destruction. There are people that should be getting their friends that are paralyzed in sinful lifestyles, in brokenness, in just lives in pieces and getting them to Jesus. But what they're doing is they're trying to get people to them. Let me give you an example. When a saved person, a child of God, seeks to enter into a relationship with somebody that is not in a committed relationship with Jesus Christ, you are buying into the distraction and the deception, and it can only lead to destruction. That's right. You will not be able to change that unsaved person. I know this is hard this morning. Come on. But God, this is what God put on my heart. You need to know that God is your helper. If you're lonely, you need to go to God. Mm -hmm. If you're lonely, get yourself some good Christian fellowship mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you are not alone. And being alone and lonely are not one and the same. That's Jesus right. declared, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Loneliness is, is something that is sent by the enemy to distract you, to deceive you, and to destroy you. And some believers are reaching into the world, entering into relationship with people, even though they know that these people are paralyzed in their sinful lifestyle, they are disconnected from God. What they need is Jesus Christ, not you. And some believers are willing to rip the roof off to try to make a, a, a relationship work that is not going to work as long as you're a believer and they're an unbeliever. And let me tell you this. This is modeled by parents. It's modeled by believers all the time. And PJ and I get to help people pick up the pieces that come when people get out of the word. When they are coming into the presence of God so encumbered that they can't. Hear the word and receive the word. Therefore, the word loses impact. And parents allow it. And grandparents allow it when grandkids are staying with you. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent and you have a child living in your home and they are a believer, they should not be dating unbelievers. If you are a believer, a committed believer, you should not be entering into a relationship with an unbeliever. The word of God is yes. against it. Because yes. what fellowship does light have with darkness? You, should, Pastor G. you need to be doing whatever you can to get those people to Jesus. Now let me tell you something. I'm going to share something with you that the Lord shared with me. The Lord shared this with me. If there's an unbeliever that you're interested in, and that unbeliever is interested in you, invite them to church. Tell them, you want to date me, you got to start going to my church. You got to come and meet my pastor and let them preach the word of God. In you. And then you might think, well, hey, um, well, they're just doing it for me. No, no, no. You see, when we get our friends to Jesus, Jesus then has the opportunity to speak to our friends. That's right. Martha was so busy, encumbered, but Mary said, I realize this guy has the word of life. When those four friends picked up their paralyzed friend, they couldn't get him inside the house, so they went up on the roof, tore the roof off, laid, let the man down in front of Jesus, and Jesus said two things to him. Hey, buddy, I forgive your sins. Now pick up your bed and walk. But if you are trying to rip the roof off to make a relationship work that is doomed already, and you're trying to get that person to you, 
You don't have the word that Jesus has. You got to get your friend to Jesus. So I'm going to look into this camera. If you're a believer trying to date an unbeliever, you got to stop that right now. That is not God's will for your life. Get, be willing to get that person to Jesus. You want to date me? Start coming to Grace Christian Church. You want to date me? Start coming to SoCal Connect. Let the word of God get to them. Give Jesus an opportunity to get to them. I guarantee you, it's going to go one way or another. There's no gray area with the Lord in that. My God. My God. Somebody turn on the air conditioning. So what are the points this morning? God is our help. He's our refuge and our strength. He's always ready to help in times of trouble. Are you in trouble this morning? Good news, God's on your side. Yeah. Are you headed for trouble because you're not listening? God's on your yeah. side. God is, he is prophetically releasing words. And you know what? We as Christians, we want to blame everything on the devil. Oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. It's in my genes. It's in my DNA. It's the devil. Hello. There are some things called natural consequences, the law of retribution, the law of seed time and harvest. And the Lord gave me this revelation this week. You know, the law of seed time and harvest says you sow what you reap. You don't reap what the devil sows. Yeah. Wake up today, grow up today, get a backbone today and stand up for yourself, stand up for your family, stand up for your business, stand up for your church, stand up for your community. The Lord is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in time of trouble. When I get the word into me, it allows the word to work in me. It allows the word to correct me, to speak to me, to strengthen me, to heal me, to deliver me. Let the mountains fall into the sea. Let the earth just fall apart. My feet are planted on the rock, Christ Jesus. He has never failed. He will never fail. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Number two, the high importance of the word. I'm just going to share a little secret before with you, and then I'm going to and then I'm going to shut up. I know that 2020 has been an incredibly difficult year for many people. We don't discount what you're going through. Some people have just feel utterly helpless, utterly hopeless, and utterly devastated. This is why it is so important that the people are receiving the Word of God. God gave PJ and I a word. Would you stand to your feet? God gave PJ and I a word in 2019. 2020 is the beginning of a new decade, not just a new year. Two things, he said, Gene. Number one, it's the beginning of an outpouring of amazing, all sufficient grace. Number two, 2020 is the beginning of the restoration of perfect vision. That's the word that we came into. That's the word that I did my best to share with our congregations and with the world. And then we came into 2020 and this little thing called COVID-19 popped up. Like a little lizard on the tree of life. And it has caught our attention. So many of us have just focused on that when God wants us to focus on the Word. Yeah. It's the beginning of the outpouring of amazing, all-sufficient grace. Amen. My grace is sufficient for that. Amen. It's the beginning of the restoration of perfect vision. And so many that you're, oh, COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID. 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 We're not devaluing anybody's discounting anybody's troubles mm -hmm. but you see PJ and I came into this year prepared and as we have watched across the globe friends of ours that have gone into panic in their ministries if we don't have in person services we know the money's going to drop mm -hmm. and what about our note what about our debt what about our mortgage but you know what I'm here to declare to the world those worries have not been present at Grace Christian Church or in SoCal Connect because we came in prepared. We came in listening. We came in unencumbered. 
We came in to receive. And when you receive the word, listen to me. When you receive the word, it works in your Amen. life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when COVID hit, I'm telling you, PJ and I went into the for friend mode. We're willing to think of any creative way to get people to Jesus. And I'm telling you, 2020 has been a great year. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. To Lord. the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. God has helped us to launch work on this building that 28 years we've been wanting to work. God told us two years ago, get online. Get online. Start preaching the word of God. And when we got online, all we had was our phone and my guitar. That's all we had. We didn't have cameras. We didn't have lights and screens and all that. I'm here to tell you today, stay connected to God. Stay connected to church. It's what's going to make the difference in your life. Let us pray. My Lord, I have preached a long time today. But God, it was a day of sowing your word. It was a day of getting the word into people, sounding an alarm, setting a boundary, yes. remembering the landmarks of your word, oh God, mm -hmm. preaching and enforcing and putting forth the power of the word, which is forever settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. And today, Lord, we have released your word, and now we are releasing prayer over these people today. Mm -hmm. That the word will work in their life. Your Amen. word says in God's word, it is profitable yes. for reproof, for rebuke, mm -hmm. for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. God, today I feel like we have been filled with the meat of the word. Now let your people take this word and live on it eternally, mm -hmm. O oh Lord. Yes. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you mm -hmm. and be gracious to you. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Let all God's people say amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. If you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us right here on Grace Christian Church. We'd love to talk with you. We'd love to pray with you. Our kids' activity sheets are there in the back. Remember to grab those. Grab your Our Daily Bread. God bless you. Go in peace. The Lord be with you.